Hello there, uh, welcome to the VOD. There's going to be some timestamps in the description uh, so you can skip the faffing about that I always have at the start of these. You might want to use them, um, up to you. Anyway, with that said, let's faff about. So I'll hit go live. We have the right title, let's confirm and go live. Okay, we are live. So now we are live, let's do the rest of the faffing about where I ping people about the fact that I'm live. At everyone, 39 plus people, fire. And the hardware bot server where I'm not pinging people, OC streams, there we go. All right, well. While people filter in, I actually need to finish setting this system up. So I suppose I'll get on with that, or oh, not setting it up, uh, well, setting it up. Actually, I do need to finish setting it up. Hey, Crispy. Because right now I still have SMT off, and that the board always does that, that's fine. Having SMT off seems like, um, seems like a mistake. I probably need that on. So... Let's go turn SMT on. I really should have done that earlier. I should have done that while I still had the memory overclock on. And then I could have made sure it was properly stable, but here we are. Um, but yeah, this is, it's booting, isn't it? Oh my goodness. This is gonna be an interesting one today, because um, I have these, in fact, blitz. Let's pop one just there. Let's pop them both just there, how about that? Um, but yes, I have some uh, China-only DDR4 that I've been sitting on for ages at this point, um, to be honest. And it's about time I got around to doing something with it. I didn't miss it again, did I? No, 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 please, thank you. Right. Oh, <laughs> I was worried there. Any idea what I see? I mean, they're CXMT something. Um, right, I just need to... Where's my SMT? There it is. Auto, sure. Let's enable that, and I'm actually... I'm actually going to overclock this memory a little bit just for my stability testing because otherwise the um, the TRCD and stuff is a little bit too tight. Um, not TR. What am I on about? I cannot talk and overclock at the same time. Hello, tech tested. Um, so I'm just going to double check that the CPU is actually stable with SMT enabled. And then I'm going to go back and set up XMP and I'm going to get a benchmark score and I'm going to write that benchmark score somewhere on screen. And then I'm going to test that stuff and I'm going to get a benchmark score at XMP and then my plan is basically I'm going to overclock um, this memory with CXMT chips and I'm going to see can I beat XMP on the best RAM that I own. That's the plan. I've got Crab Rave stuck in my head, which is not really relevant to the overclocking, but... I, I have a, a new set of headphones that I was trying out earlier. Um, so, you know, because I've watched LTT videos, I thought, well, if I'm testing out audio, I'll test it out with Crab Rave. Um, and now I've got it stuck in my head. Um. <sighs> How is everybody today? I'll be honest, personally, not in a great mood, but uh, streaming normally helps with that, so... Yeah. I've been kind of like, um, a bit manic all week. Um, and I, I've sort of crashed today, basically. Which is not ideal, you know. Alex says, had a good day until I found out my P35 board was dead. 
Yeah, that would not that that would worsen a day, wouldn't it? Tech tested says just finished editing a video and about to eat lunch. That sounds good. Sounds satisfying. It's always nice finishing something. Lunch is normally nice as well, depending on what the lunch is. But yeah, sorry to hear about the uh, P35 board, Alex. Which board was it? Working, says Crispy. Fair enough. Alright. I'm going to run uh, 2.5b one more time, just to make sure that it actually is stable and happy. Um... Uh, Gigabyte GA EP35 DS4, says Alex, is the dead board. Mm. Is that one of the ones... Can it set memory timings? Because I have a Gigabyte P35 board that can't set memory timings. I mean, I suppose if it's dead, it definitely can't set memory timings. Because um, it can't do anything, because it's dead. But, yeah. May or may not be much of a loss, depending on that. Um... Crispy says, I do have an interview with Honda later. That'll be fun, I hope. Yeah, that sounds fun. That's cool. Right, we're about there on the second Y Cruncher run. I think I'll just use 1B for the actual overclocking on the stream. Um, just because it doesn't take so long. Um, and it's also less hard on stability. So, given that 2.5B has passed twice touch words nearly yes given that 2.5b is passed twice at sort of fast memory settings I think I can safely assume that this CPU overclock is 1b stable so with that in mind um, let's get back in the BIOS and then I will explain myself once more um, for the people who have just filed in and also for the sake of the VOD because um, I like to give people a timestamp to skip the faffing about. I say that as if I've uploaded any VODs this year um, but it will happen eventually. Alright, so um, this is a China only model of colourful DDR4 that has CXMT Chinese made chips on it. This is the best DDR4 I own. It's Corsair Dominator Platinum, it's dual rank D-Die, 3600 CL14. Um, I thought, I don't really have anything that counts as a fair comparison, so let's just do an unfair comparison. Um, my plan is this, I am going to set that to XMP, I'm going to get a Y Cruncher 1B score, and I'm going to put that on the stream somewhere. Um, then I'm going to install that, and I'm going to see what it does at XMP, and then I'm going to overclock it and I'm going to see what I can get out of it overclocked in Y Cruncher 1 billion. So that's the plan. With that in mind, uh, this board is really annoying about timings. Like, you have to explicitly set secondary timings to auto, otherwise, it doesn't take. So, having done that, Let's get back into BIOS. Alex asks, what does the Corsair kit do at like 2 volts for Ryzen? Well, I've been running it at 3733CL14 because it does CL12, but I didn't see a performance improvement in 3D stuff. Um, on, uh, what's it? On the 5700G, I did 4800, not 4800, goodness me, that would be nice though, uh, 4400 CL14, which I think was limited just by what dual rank B die can be pushed to on that. So, what, for goodness sake. It doesn't help that I can't see the postcode because I've put the blooming memory in front of it. Okay, we're on B2. 98, A299, A9, AB. Good bias. Yes. <sighs> so, set XMP, 
and make sure that we don't have any sub-timing settings that have snuck through. No, we don't. Neat. So, there's no reason that should have any trouble at all, of course. Um, so let's load that up and let's see what Y Crunch score I get on that and then I'll unbox the CXMT. Um, it should be interesting. I've got my uh, USB scope hooked up, assuming that it hasn't messed up in OBS again. Uh, so I'll be able to get like a proper close-up shot of the ICs. Alex says this kit was what you used for the Corsair Hardware Bot Comp, right? It was one of them. I also had a single rank kit. Um, right. Uh, text source. New. Let's just call it notes. Twenty-seven point three one two seconds. Oh yeah, it's got the Phantom Gaming logo, hasn't it, up there? Yeah. Alright, well. Now we've got the score, let's get back into BIOS and set the memory to default. Because something tells me this might not boot 3600CL14. Maybe I'm being pessimistic. Um, but I'm not particularly expecting it to do that, so... Come on, capture card. Right, then. So. Let's unbox. There's not a whole lot to the box, if we're honest. It's a box, and it's a plastic clamshell with some RAM in it. It's also more difficult to open when it's not up against a table. I have tested these before, I know they work. I, I say that because like, I'm not handling it that well. Um, but yeah, so there's the RAM. Um, being held awkwardly in front of a camera as I lean over the camera but that's what it looks like um, systems made itself made its way back to Windows now so let's uh, shut that down and let's pull the other one out packaging absolutely everywhere now. Um, right, you know what, let's let's leave one of the boxes um, in the system like that. Why not? That's nice, isn't it? Uh, Crispy Silicon says you should drop a link in the Intel Discord. 
Uh, I will if I'm doing an Intel thing, but this is AMD, so it doesn't seem right. I mean, to be honest, maybe I should drop a link in the AMD Discord. Uh, AMD Red Team, that might be a good idea. This is some pretty niche content, says Paul. That's true. Right. Is the USB scope working? Yes. Wonderful. So... I might not be focused here. Ah, here we are. So there is your chip marking. Uh, Discord.gg slash AMD, Alex, is the AMD Discord. So, yes, this is what the chip looks like uh, from the top. Let's have a bit of a look from the edge as well. Let's see what we can see at the edge of the chip. Because that's always interesting. All right, so it's asymmetrical. We, we can see we've got two little metal dots there, and we've got a bump under the chip. So that bump means it's using a wire bond package. And then we've got another little metal dot on the end there. So that's what the end of this CXMT DDR4 chip looks like. All right. Well. Hey, previous Slayer. Couldn't resist for such an occasion. Yeah, fair enough. Good to see you here. Isn't that a dot me database? Is it? What? Oh, for goodness sake. I, uh, let me install this RAM and then I'll find the AMD Discord. It de that definitely used to be the link for AMD. I, I'm not sure I want to know what Adopt Me Database is. Like, I thought Previous Slayer was joking when he said that. Um, right. Is that going to go in? There we go. Um, I've got this great big ring light here, but the moment I lean over to try and actually install the memory, it's in shadow and I can't see anything. I mean, on the plus side, my arm is very well lit. Okay, I think that's, that looks like it's in properly. Right. I don't have the option to invite users either on the server, that's irritating. Uh, I'm probably missing something really obvious. Is 
sorry, I'm supposed to be overclocking, but I'm just going to... Um, oh yeah, the air current, the airflow is making the box wobble. I like that, I'm going to leave that. Um, Okay, you know what, sorry. Uh, it's going to bother me if I don't find out. So, like... Oh, I bet it's linked on Reddit, actually. Yeah, it's linked on Reddit, okay. So, let me just make sure that that's correct. I think that's correct. Alex says I got a link. That's interesting because I got this link which is different, but hopefully that works. Um, I don't know, they have a community content channel, no one ever seems to use it. I might as well post in there I suppose, this feels like it's quite interesting. I bet nobody comes from there. Oh, wait. You got your link from amd.com. Fair enough. That's probably official then, isn't it? Right. Oh, Limonek. Oh. Thank you for the bits, um, whoever. That, that's what it says when that's the person's chosen to be anonymous, isn't it? Hopefully that wasn't too loud on the mic. But yeah, thank you. Right, let's go set some XMP. Come on, give me BIOS. There we are. Come on, capture card. Maybe the guy's name is Anonymous Cheerer. Yeah, maybe. Just this one guy called that who just goes around Twitch cheering on random streams. I mean, I guess you could. That'd be one way of doing things. But yes. Well, XMP has worked. So let's fire up Zen timings and we'll, we'll see what the XMP actually is. So we've got uh, 3000, uh, 16, 18, 18, and XMP has given us 5, 8, 32 on the RRD timings. Those are the ones that are kind of um, conventionally XMP sometimes doesn't set them very well. Um, but that, I mean, it looks okay, but then we're only at 3000, so who knows. Um, right. Well, let's run Y Cruncher. 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 There's an R. I'm not Jonathan Ross. It, for many reasons. Uh, oh, and thank you for the follow. Oh. Um. Previous Slayer says nice TRC. Yeah, it. Mm. We'll see, because the problem is it, the speed is so low at XMP that it's kind of difficult to. It's difficult to compare it, because it's like what? I guess 5 sixths of 3600, I guess? All right. Well, we have our first result. So let me. Oh, Luminac. Uh, thank you for the sub tech tested. Thirty six point seven eight.
All right. Um. What was the TRC actually? Because I didn't pay attention to that. I'm going to pull that up again. Oh, right. I I'm sat here thinking that like TRC is particularly tight or something, and it I. Okay, right. Yes, fair enough. Very nice. Capital N, nice TRC. I can't argue with that. Uh, right. Well, let's overclock. Still got crab rave stuck in my head. <laughs> Blue minute. I, I, I. Thank you. I. N normally, like none of those three things happen, but I we now had like a first sub, a second sub, and a cheer. Um. So yeah, I thank you. Um. It goes some way towards what it costs to get these bloody ram sticks imported. <laughs> Um, right, what was I going to do? Um, I think they should just do 3200. I think. I think, because I, I did play with them a little bit before, and I think they did that no problem. So let's find out. Could I help feed your addiction, says Tech Tested. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> it, it's... Yeah, it, it's actually much appreciated because, like, all oh, these streams are a money pit. I enjoy streaming, but yeah. Right. So I think that booted up fine. Uh, let's check in Zen timings, but I think um, 3200 CL16 is looking fine. Is that actually opening? Come on. Yep, so it has booted up at 3200 CL16. Uh, TRC not so nice anymore. Um, but yeah. So, let's see how that's looking in Y-Cruncher. Hopefully the Streamlabs notifications aren't too loud, by the way. Um, they're quite loud for me, but I think I've got the mic positioned so that they won't come through too loudly. Although it would be optimistic to imagine that there's going to be even more today. So that's probably fine anyway. Thirty six point one three nine. Well, that's an improvement. <laughs> Thank you, previous Slayer. I suppose I was baiting that a bit, wasn't I? Oh, Crispy Silicon says R addiction. Good point. We're all mad here. Um, right. I don't think it's going to go much above 3200, but there's only one way to find out. I should really save a profile. I mean, not that we've really changed much so far, but you never know what's going to happen. It doesn't take long to save a profile. So 3333 now. Hold on. 
Can you see? Oh, you can kind of see the postcode. It's a little bit small. Um, I'm going to fiddle with the camera a little bit. Hold on. So if I rotate the camera around a bit, you can just see the mic there in the corner. Having done that, I can slide the system over and then I can make it a little bit bigger and now the postcode should be a bit more readable I mean there's no postcode at the moment because it's in OS but you know so we have a boot from 3333 um, yep that is running I'm not expecting this to be Y Cruncher stable Maybe I'll be surprised. Okay, no, there we are. That did not work. All right. Now the question is, do I back off on speed or do I try and loosen timings? So the board seems to be loosening the sub timings on auto, because it's handy because it means we don't really need to worry about sub-timings, so thank you ASRock for that. I guess let's just loosen out the primary timings by a couple of steps. And see if that helps stabilise the higher frequency. And we can tighten back up once we've found our max frequency. I am hoping that, like, I mean, we'll see, but I'm hoping that once I get into tuning the sub timings, that I will actually be able to beat the dominators because the dominators are not tuned, it's just at XMP. That's the plan, anyway. So let's just confirm that we have booted up at the higher speed. We have indeed. Uh, previous Slayer says, if I remember rightly, the Chinese guys would usually get their CXMT sticks to run similar to CJR, but it probably depends. Okay. So similar to CJR would imply that 3733 ought to be possible. Alright. Well, one way to find out. I need to stop habitually dragging Benchmate behind the camera. Not that it really makes a difference in this situation because it's Y Cruncher that matters. I mean, it's definitely doing better. It's... oh! Right. Oh. I mean... I loosened out by more than I raised the frequency by. So that makes me think that this particular IC in this... Hold on, why did I receive a hype train emote from that? I didn't do anything. I was just sat here fiddling with some RAM. Well, anyway. Um, what was I saying? So, yes. Because I don't think that's timings at this point, I'm going to try a little bit more voltage. So if it's similar to CJR, then that means it's probably a little bit delicate. So let's not go over 1.4. I might actually end up... I mean, I'll try 3266 as well. But I might end up quite limited on frequency here. The other thing is there's probably multiple revisions of CXMT. So it's entirely possible that this is, like, a less good revision. I mean, it's on a low-end stick. 
Apparently I can't dismiss the thing saying that I have a hype train emote. There's a share button but there's no cross. Oh, whatever. Well that failed earlier. I'm just going to run that again. I feel like that's slightly less stable, you know? Let's try lower voltage. Let's try like 1.3. Cuz it it's not as if it was failing any later with 1.4. So it doesn't feel like it's benefited, at least at the moment. I mean, maybe it's one of those things where it's like it doesn't help with frequency, but maybe it helps with uh, tightening a timing later on. So we'll see. Um, but yeah, and it might be that there's something where there's a relationship between certain timings and voltage as well, because that's a fun one with like. Certainly with LPDA derived, like DDR3 and DDR2, I think, but it's really noticeable with like PSC, which is, you know, based on LPDA. Like TRCD on PSC is just magic scaling juice, like you loosen out TRCD and then everything else scales with voltage. But yeah, like. Top tip, if you're trying to run really high voltage on PSC DDR3 and it's not taking it, then... Oh, hello. That's a lot of um, limit exceeded exception-ing. I mean, that seemed to get a little bit further. Let's try that once more. Did I get halfway through what, what I was saying about PSC? I can't I'm not good at doing more than one thing at once. I can't multitask. But yeah, uh, TRCD on PSC. Loosen it, you get more voltage scaling. If you have it too tight, then you get voltage rollover really low. Um, varies a little bit. Some sticks don't care as much. Well, hey, that passed. Um, okay. But that's not stable because it failed the first time. I'm going to run it again a third time and we'll see what happens the third time. What I don't want to do is I don't want to run with settings that are a little bit unstable because I'll never know if it's my change that's made it even worse. But I guess I could try like... I don't know, 1.25 volts, so I could try maybe somewhat, something in the middle, like 1.32 perhaps? Okay, so I've got another exception here. So it failed two out of three runs. Enjoy your food, Alex. See you later. Wait, did I miss the fucking... I missed the BIOS, didn't I? Whoops. Let's try that again. Right, well, 1.25-ish. I 
I mean, it'll be really interesting if it actually prefers lower voltage. Also really annoying because that means it doesn't scale, but you know. I suppose scaling with a reduction in voltage is technically a kind of scaling, right? The fact that it's still booting up is worrying me. Um, I am going to double check Zen timings, but yeah, I mean, no reason at all to think that it wouldn't be booting up. Like, I know what this board is like when it's recovering, it takes longer than that. But there was that one time with Cinebench last year where, like, I got a personal best and then it turned out the RAM was at stock. I was not happy, so. Yeah. We'll see how this goes. So it's not going to be a PB because the timings are loose. This looks good though. Looks like it's going to pass. Yep, that passed. Okay. So let's run that twice more and we'll see if it passes all three times. And if it passes all three times, then what we found out is that these sticks definitely prefer lower voltage. I mean, I guess to be fair, they're not like massively getting cold. Like, I mean, there, there's air moving around up there, but like, they don't have like a lot of active airflow on them. Aha! Uh -huh. So this time, we did have a problem. Let's see what it does on the third run. And that will tell me, are we actually getting more or less stable? I, I guess. It will give me an indication. It won't tell me definitively. Uh, it's, y crunch is always a bit tense, because it's like, as you get later and later into the run, um, the progress um, updates get further and further apart. Okay, so we got coefficient is too large, but we got it right at the end that time. I'm going to try a slightly lower voltage. And if that doesn't work, then it's, it's so close that 3266 has got to be stable, surely. I wish I could customise the no signal screen. Yeah, let's just try two steps lower, so 1.236. So a teensy bit lower memory voltage. And that has booted up right away, so... I'm not going to keep messing around with Zen timings, that's clearly booted. Ah. I think that made it less stable. Okay. So, let's tentatively call 1.25 volts optimal. And let's try a lower speed. In fact, let's give it a touch more. Let's give it 1.26. And let's tighten our timings back up to what they were running at 3200. And hopefully that will work. I say hopefully that will work as it F9s on me. Ugh. Yeah, so about how it looks when it's not booting. Uh, this is how it looks when it's not booting. 
Alright, so maybe the tighter timings need more voltage, perhaps. Uh, keeping an eye out for booting. There's B2, come on, BIOS, give me BIOS. 99, A9, AB. Okay, good. Oh, that's... okay. Is it coming through like that on the stream as well? Uh, this capture card never ceases to amaze. Let's try 1.3 again. I think it's a capture card thing. It's like something to do with how the capture card interacts with the graphics card. So at 1.3 volts it's booting up. So I don't know which timing, but it seems like in general tighter timings need maybe higher voltage, but pushing high frequency prefers lower voltage, which is interesting. Or maybe there is actually a timing? No, it might be a timing that prefers lower voltage. Uh, actually, I want to check Zen timings. Yep, we are at 32.66. Good. And that's unhappy. Right. Okay. I'm going to hit the reset button. If it's that unstable, I don't want to put it through shutdown. <sighs> Should I give up on the overclock already? And like, not the overclock, but give up on frequency already? I'm kind of inclined to give up on frequency already. Maybe I'll revisit frequency. Um, although revisiting frequency is always a bit of a pain, but... So I'll load up our 3200 profile, and let's start looking at timings. So, okay, um, first one, obvious one, 4416 on RRD and 4 act window, because that we're only doing 3200, that should probably work, if not 4620 will most likely work, that seems to work on just about everything. Um, and also white cruncher is very sensitive to those so that's one of the big things that's actually going to help us get the overclock on these sticks past XMP on the dominators hopefully previous slayer says good timing <laughs> On giving the CXMTs a spin, I just saw a pair of CXMT Patriots on German eBay. They cost the same as new, though. Yeah, it's... I mean, you say good timing, but, like... I should have got on this a lot sooner. Like, I went to some effort to get these imported, and it's now getting to the stage where CXMT chips are just filtering through onto Western kits anyway. And I, I, I was just sitting on these for, like six months a year I feel a bit stupid for that but you know can't change the past well so let's see if our Titan T4 and RRDs works it's looking good so far I'm expecting this to work. It would be quite surprising if it didn't. Also, I just realised I'm missing the units on the CXMT results. 
Oh -ho -ho! And that is the power of RRD and 4 when you're doing Y Cruncher. 30.895 seconds. Whew. That's just lopping like one sixth off the time. That is. Those timings. Those timings make a huge, huge difference. Um, right. 30.895. Okie dokie, um, let's run that again just to make sure it's actually stable, because once again I don't want to like dive into tuning other timings and have settings that are unstable without me knowing, because then there's no end of pain. But yeah, that was the low hanging fruit and it was a very very juicy fruit indeed. Um, this is where it gets harder now. Yeah, so. We have our big performance jump from the RRD timings. There's probably something to be had in row cycle time. Uh, I think I want to try and do 1T with gear down mode off next. Because that's going to affect things like cast latency. So let's do that next. This is maybe going to be quite instructive as to like just general procedure for DDR4 overclocking for anybody who's interested. Um, where's our gear down mode? Here we are. So, 1T, gear down mode, off. Let's see how it likes that. We're at pretty low frequency, so it should be okay with it. Uh, I think that's... Yeah, well, we've booted up. Come on, validate the system timers, whatever it says ready to bench. <sighs> I should do a prediction. I should do a pred I, I'll do a prediction for whether um whether the CXMT will actually beat um, the Dominators. Let's. Uh, how long do I want to give that? Let's. Let's set that to 15 minutes. Okay. Start prediction. And it looks like that has been stable, um, and we have a slight improvement in the time. So let's. Let's update that. 30. Point seven six two now. Okay. 
and we'll give that a second run again just to confirm our stability. And then I guess um, cast latency, I suppose. See if we can do CL15. Hello, Pirate Cypher. I got bored waiting for a Y Cruncher to run, so I did the Twitch thing with the predictions. Um, right, so, gear down mode off is stable. Um, well, stable enough. Stable as we need it to be. What I'm going to do to make sure the prediction stays interesting is I'm not going to touch TRTP until I'm sort of happy with some of the others, and I'm not going to touch. I'll save TRTP and TRFC because those are going to be the big ones, I think. And with that said, let's do cast latency. Um, Pirate Safe says, I was surprised that your channel is, has a mature content warning. I I might need to rethink that, to be honest. Um, the problem is that sometimes I fucking swear, and I, I have a pretty good work mouth, but like, I don't know. I don't know. Basically, I have this kind of understanding that it's a good idea to have that so that Twitch doesn't get mad at you for swearing. But, I'm not sure what the current policies are. And it's not like I swear often. So, oh, wow, okay. Um, cat latency 15, it's very unhappy with. Let's hit the reset button there, because, yeah, that's not nice. But, yeah, I mean, it is really, it's, overclocking is not exactly, um, I mean, it's very technical content, but it's not, like, child unfriendly at all. The only thing that's child unfriendly is if, like, something really annoys me and I go off on a sweary rant about it. Uh, Poet Cypher says, I hope it won't hurt channel AI recommendation. Yeah, I... Which of these... One of these two normally... You know what, let's do uh, RP for next. Um... It probably does, but then... Oh! Blumenek, uh, thank you for the sub, Paul, as well. That's been a lot of those today. Um, discoverability on Twitch doesn't seem to be that good anyway. Most of the people who are here are people um, from various discords who know me through Discord. Um... My long-term plan for discoverability is to actually start cutting together highlights and doing YouTube videos and stuff. Um, I'm not there, unfortunately. Paul says I had an unused Twitch Prime laying around, might as well help fund some RAM. Thank you, it's very much appreciated. It's one step closer to that payout threshold. Um, right, let's see about... I can't. Am I running 15 or 14 TRP? Or 16? I'm, I'm running 16, aren't I? Yeah. Let's see about the Titans TRP anyway. Uh, I. <laughs> it's funny. I've got. 
every VOD saved, and I intend at some point to upload every single VOD to YouTube. But the thing is, I don't feel comfortable putting them up there without some timestamps so that people can, like, skip to the interesting bits to some extent, and, like, particularly to skip faffing about at the start. But what that means is that I have this massive backlog because doing the timestamps takes ages. So, yeah. 30.618. Let's rerun that just to make sure it's stable. Ah. Oh, let me in my big mouth. Right, okay. Um. Hmm. We have a lot more people predicting no than yes. That's interesting. Uh, right. So, because that's unstable... Uh, Poet Safe says maybe keep a paper notepad and log events um, as they happen. I think... Yeah. The problem with that is I'm not like I already find it quite difficult kind of juggling overclocking and talking and everything at the same time. Um cuz I I did want to do that, but like it is difficult. Okay. I'm going to have to change the note, because the, the PB that I got there was unstable. Paul asks, does it roll over above 1.35 volts? So, for frequency, it actually seems to be happier at 1.25 volts, if anything. But it doesn't make a huge difference. Uh, for timings, I don't know yet. I'm kind of a little bit, um, I don't want to push excessive voltage, partially because I don't know the behaviour, um, but also because I don't want to damage them. But, yeah, figuring out voltage rollover is a very weird thing. And I, I'm not sure where these sticks roll over and, like, in what ways. Thirty point six four five. let's call that our new uh, PB there. Hopefully this one's actually stable. actually surprised that like more channel points have been bet on no than yes for this like because Y Cruncher is really sensitive to sub timings and the nature of XMP is that your sub timings are awful alright that's past this time and uh, I, I'm not going to update the PB for 8 milliseconds but I am comfortable that that's reasonably stable so one of the TRCD timings can normally go really tight, and I can never remember which one. I think it's the second one. But I'm not even sure about that, and I don't know how this particular memory is going to behave, so... Let's just try 17 on both and see what that does first.
I should probably look it up, shouldn't I? Oh, where would I find it? Oh, I would probably find it in one of my um, old reviews. Because I think I posted... Uh, I did overclocks and I posted Zen timings, screenshots for the overclocks, didn't I? Yes, it's TRCDWR that normally goes tight. Okay, good. Which I think is the second one in BIOS. Aha, uh -huh, right. Uh, fire up notepad, we have... 30.442 seconds. Um, I'm going to rerun that before I commit that to being the new PB. Just because, you know, I've been burnt before by doing that. Looking good. Yep. Okay, okay. That's another point two seconds shaved off. I would be really surprised if they both go tighter, but I feel like I ought to try it rather than just assuming they won't. I need to do TRC at some point as well. That's probably going to make a big difference. Let's save this as work in progress, because we made a couple more changes. And... I mean, this is... This already feels a little bit cursed if this works. <laughs> Alice says, oh no, someone ruined the prediction ratio and I went through so much effort to manipulate it. It's, it's supposed to be what you think. We're getting a, a lot more on yes now. Oh. <laughs> Oh dear. Okay, so the tighter TRCD doesn't work. That was a blue screen. One day I will get a soundboard. One day I will get a soundboard and I will get Truffman to record himself yelling the word blue screen as only Truffman can. Um, but today is not that day, I'm afraid. So, we can't have them both tighter, but I bet that RCDWR will go weirdly tight. So let's try this. I mean, it posted. RCDWR of 12 has posted, so that's a good sign. That means it probably behaves the same way everything does. Right, I need to choose a winner for the prediction at some point, but we don't have the result yet. I should have made it last for longer. I don't know if it's possible to change that retroactively to like reopen it. So the prediction was 31% for yes and 69% for no from one user. Um, okay. I, I suppose... I guess that means that I need to do some of the big timings. Because if it's, if it's going to beat the dominators it needs to do it pretty soon. 
so that I can get the prediction outcome sorted out. Uh, so 30 seconds dead there, just about, uh, 30.056. Once again let's rerun for stability. I'm expecting it to be stable though. I'm really tempted to see if it will run 420 TRFC. That's probably a bad idea. Let's floor RCDWR, let's take it all the way down to 8, because normally that works. Hey GT403, good to see you. How goes it? Well, um, the CXMT has a brutal frequency wall, so... Uh, I'm at like 3200. Am I actually at 3200 or 3266? I can't remember. I'm at 3200. Okay. So yes, pretty brutal frequency wall, at least on this setup. Um, maybe Zen 1 or Intel will behave a bit differently with it, but yeah. As far as overclocking, I mean, we did um, TRRD and T4 already, so that's that gave us most of the like six second improvement over XMP. So the, the dominators that we're up against are these things, which are dual rank B die. Um, but they were only running XMP, so the sub timers were awful. Ooh -hoo -hoo. Sub timing's not so awful here, though. 29.819. So let's. Once again, we're going to rerun that just to make sure it's stable. Because um, I've had timings on this that will, like, pass the first run and then fail the second run. It seems to like to do that a lot. And I would rather know if my change is what's caused instability or not. But yeah, we've, we've been going for about an hour and a quarter at this point, I think. So, early stages still for a memory overclock. Alright. It's a very unfair comparison, of course, you know, that it's it's a very... Well, I think it's actually the highest bin of this model that uses these chips, or used it at the time. Um, but it's a very unfair comparison, because it's uh, dual versus single rank. But I thought that there's not really a fair comparison I can make. Because, um, like, I either have OEM sticks that don't have any XMP, or I have, like, enthusiast sticks with good XMPs, or I have, like, um, maybe I have a stick where the XMP is comparable, but then it's like, well, the performance is just dictated by the XMP. So it's like, 
There's not a fair way to compare an overclock, a, a manual overclock against XMP. So I thought, well, I'll just do it the unfair way. And that's what we're doing right now. Uh, right. Mm. So I did say I wanted to try to actually hit high performance quite quickly. So let's let's try and tighten up row cycle time. Because basically, um, I want to beat the dominators as soon as I can now, so that I can put in the result for the prediction that I did. I, I should have set it to last longer. I should have set it to like half an hour, realistically. That was a mistake. It was a mistake to think that in 15 minutes we might be close to the answer. <laughs> But yeah, I had been having quite a bad day, but I, I like streaming. It always perks, perks me up a bit, so having a good day now because I'm streaming. And that's the power of row cycle time. That's another over a second locked off there. 28.272. Let's rerun that just to make sure it's stable. <laughs> Previous Slayer who predicted no is saying, uh oh, yes. Um. <laughs> Paul says, I'm also having a good day because I'm watching your stream. Win win. Oh, thank you. Yep. Um, yeah, I'm going to put in the time from the first run. Um, but, yeah. I should explain. I, ha I haven't tuned the sub timings on this memory before. But what I have done is Y Cruncher. I know my way around Y Cruncher with Ryzen and DDR4. So I know what to hit. It's going to be this, row cycle time. Um, RFC makes a big difference, but it's also... I don't trust TRFC. So I'm going to hold off on doing that. Uh, TRTP is the other really big one. Um, but for now I'm going to try and tighten row cycle time a bit more. Ooh, that's an F9. Alright. But yeah, I really like a 4 gigabit Samsung eDie for Y Cruncher because it does TRTP really, really tight. It's still just sitting at... Come on, recover, will you? It's just sitting on F9. Like... Look at this. Look. It's not moving. Do something. Poke you. Yeah. <sighs> Previous Slayer says I think you went below theoretical minimum on that just now. Uh, maybe I have no idea how that works. Um, I think it was something like I, uh, who knows. The problem is there's all kinds of different arguments as to what theoretical minimum might be, and I cannot remember which the one that looks like it's true is. But yeah, this is extremely f 9 I'm going to use the reset button on the case, it's easier to reach. Mm. 
Nope, it's still just sitting on F9. Right. Um, let's kill the power at the... Pa that I'll hit reset and then I'll kill power at the mains. And hopefully that will make it go, oh, post failed, okay. Is there a clear CMOS button on this? I really hope if I clear CMOS it doesn't wipe the profiles. That would really... I would be very unhappy if that happened. I'm going to toggle mains power a few more times first. Also, the VRM fan isn't moving. <laughs> okay... Which of these buttons is clear CMOS? I need a pokey thing. What can I poke? Clear? Thermal paste. That's a pokey thing, isn't it? Okay, clear CMOS has been poked. Oh, fingers crossed. This is why we save profiles. Assuming it keeps the profiles. Yeah, I mean, this is rolling through a lot of postcodes. I think it's probably... Yeah, this looks like it's going to boot up. Just give it a minute. <sighs> yeah, okay. And the profiles are still there, good. And the board even includes the fan settings in the profile. I like that. Okay. So... GT403 says, if the pokey bit enters the pokey bit receptacle, then it's a valid pokey bit. So, Pirate Cypher, you know earlier when I was saying about like the channel being marked for mature content? Um, anyway... Um, Let's not touch TRC again just at the moment. Where's RTP? There it is. It's not 9 at the moment because that's probably auto with um, with the JDEC settings. Um. <laughs> uh, let's check what it actually is in Zen timings. And then we'll see how tight it can go off of that. Assuming this boots up, I assume. But yeah, I, the main issue with the mature content thing is probably just going to be that the stream isn't shown to children, basically. And um, I don't know. You you could take that in different ways. Right. Uh, where's T R T P? It's there. Twelve. Okay. So T R T P is twelve at the minute. Let's see if I can get it any tighter than that. Because that's going to be the really is going to be the other really big one for Y Cruncher. I think, hopefully, probably, maybe. Uh, 
da, 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 do. there we are, 12, let's try 9, I guess. Suddenly my finger has started tingling. You know, just to keep you all updated. Sixty-two. I have not seen it get stuck on sixty-two before. That's a new one. Uh, this isn't going to be another clear sea moss. You know what? The sea moss clear was so painless. If it doesn't look like it's going to recover. I'll just clear CMOS. Right. So, 9 didn't work. I guess that means we should try 10, right? You know, once it's actually recovered. This is now a booting at JDEX stream. Okay, here we go. I see B2. Great. RTP, let's try 10. That looks promising. Hmm. That looks less promising. Okay, well, that's. I'm, I'm not going to declare it unstable just because it took a second try to post. Especially immediately after a CMOS clear. Although, I'm expecting a login screen at some point, and we're not getting one. Oh, no. Okay, that's not working, is it? Wow, so TRTP is really on the edge, I guess. Let's try 11. That's just the capture card. Come on. That's annoying, because RTP is like the real... That, that was the secret weapon. That was the thing I had up my sleeve. Um... So if we're not getting a significant tightening out of TRTP, then I don't know what else is going to get us more performance. So previous Slayer's channel points might just be safe. We'll see. Give me 27 something at least. Come on. Oof. Oh my goodness, that's actually worse. Why is that worse? I'm rerunning that. I mean, I'd rerun anyway because of stability, but like, what? Ah, <sighs> 
28.291. I mean, that's not... I'd... I'm going to run it once... I don't understand why tightening TRTPs made it worse. So is it something else that's gone weird, or is it actually scaling negatively with that timing? 3 Previous Slayer says the only time I Y crunched my stuff for hardware bot thing was insanely unhappy with TWR or TRTP any lower than auto. Uh, it, Samsung 4 gigabit e die is the only thing that I've encountered where TRTP can actually really tighten up. Uh, it's. I'm going to push TRTP back up a tick and see if that makes it perform better again. Come on. I'm not going to be happy if this actually helps. I can still touch cast write latency, that might be worth a poke. Although, uh, cast stuff doesn't do much for Y Cruncher. stand up while that runs because I've been sat still for an hour and a half. So let's have a bit of a stretch. I was welcome. Right. And 28.351. Okay. So, it seems like RTP does help and it's just running worse anyway after the CMOS clear or something. <sighs> Which I can actually believe, because... Uh, there's like this whole thing with Ryzen having an AI branch predictor or something, and I guess, like... If you've run a whole load of Y Cruncher and then you forget how to run Y Cruncher, it's going to slow it down. Well, that was faster. Right. So that's back up to speed. I'm going to run that once more because I I just I'm not sure what's going on here. There's obviously some variability in play. Hmm. Okay. So it's being variable and it's not scoring as well as it was, basically. But the tighter TRTP is valid. That does actually help. So let's tighten TRTP back up and... I say tighten it back up, you know, by a point. Um, ba -ba -boo. I guess RAS? We could do TRAS? I suppose? I have no idea what to expect out of TRAS on this. Let's try 32. 
go from 38 to 32. I don't know if this is even going to help, even if it runs. I know like a lot of the calculations for theoretical minimum row cycle time are based on having like um, TRAS plus something else, but then I've also seen people put row cycle time below TRAS. So I'm not sure what's up with that. Anyway, that's booted up, so let's um, see how that goes. I mean, I don't understand TRAS, so there's kind of two questions here. There's the question of um, stability, but there's also the performance question. Will it run? Will it actually perform better? And we'll have our answer soon. And the answer is it runs, but the performance is not noticeably worse. I'm going to rerun that. It's annoying that after clearing CMOS it's just not performing, like it's 0.1 seconds off. And I, I don't know if rerunning all the time is actually going to help with that. I mean, kind of. It's definitely performing better on the second run now, but that's still not a PB, but I'm going to take it anyway. Because it's, it's not any worse. So let's let's save a profile and let's keep going on two hours. Oh, I'm starting to yawn now. It's not even two hours in. Shouldn't do that on sc on stream because it's infectious. Uh, I guess twenty eight. I just realised if I do actually manage to beat the Dominators, that is like the ultimate use for the garbage can emote. I'm going to let validating system timers finish because it's like maybe that's affecting it. Maybe that's part of what affects the performance. And it doesn't take that long normally. Come on. Give me something. Give me an improvement. Ooh. Hey! That's an improvement, technically. It's 28.203. Rerun to check stability. Not even below 28 seconds yet, but it is an improvement. I mean, there's going to be massive scaling from RFC, to be fair. I don't know how much headroom there's going to be in RFC, but there's going to be massive scaling from it. No! Damn. That's unfortunate. Um, okay. So, not updating the PB because it didn't pass the second run. Bum 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 b
Uh, let's just try for 30. Be funny if it turns out it's scaled with cold. Yeah. Today in things that I'm not doing anytime soon, running CXMT on cold. System time is done. Uh, fingers crossed, we still keep most of the benefit, and it's actually yeah, and it's actually stable now. Also, fingers crossed, I can get a sentence out. That would be nice. Twenty-eight point two one two. I mean, that's still an improvement. Really, not that far off, actually. So, hopefully, it's actually stable. Well, stable enough. This is the other problem with the prediction, is like, if the answer's no, then we're not going to find that out until basically I've given up. And then eventually it'll be like, nope, I give up. And that's the, you know, we get the answer at the end of the stream. But I'm not giving up yet. I'm far from giving up. Can't give up when we're not even below 28 seconds. There's also part of me that's really tempted to just like overclock the processor, which would be cheating. I feel like I, I guess I could do F clock. I don't know if that would help. So those are all minimised probably. Roast cycle time, uh, let's save the profile actually. Row cycle time is not minimised, but when I set it to 48 it didn't boot and didn't recover. But I could take it down a hair, maybe. 52? Let's try 52. I did just save a profile. I see B2. That's a good sign. We're loading windows. We're in windows. So, even tighter row cycle time. Will it be stable? Will it be faster? It should be faster. Hardware info. There's hardware info. And bench. Fingers crossed for under 28 seconds this time. Uh, Fox says, how's it going? Um, it's going alright, but I'm a bit disappointed there wasn't much room to tighten TRTP. Uh -huh, 28.037. Nearly under 28 seconds. 
But yeah, I've only had CMOS clear twice so far. So in that sense it's going pretty well. Um, the CXMT has a really bad frequency wall though, so it can't go above 3200. Um, which is not ideal. Um, I was really hoping I'd get a little bit more out of it, but I don't think I'm going to, frequency wise. Wow. Okay. So still a bit variable there. Um, I'm going to update the score with the, the first score that it got, but like clearly it's capable of doing under under 28 seconds now. It, it at least does the tight uh, TRRDs. So let's, let's pop back into BIOS. Uh, previous Slayer says, what, how about SCLs? And to be honest, I'm not sure what S SCLs are. So, yeah. Hello, Nuke the Power. Um, save a profile. Okay. So when I went to 48 on row cycle time, it didn't boot, but maybe having lower TRAS will make it happier? I kind of don't want to risk it. Um, when previous slides said SCLs, I'm not 100% sure what he was referring to. I don't know if it was the these timings. Or if it... I mean, I, mean, I know there's also some of these like setup time type things which I'm not sure if I want to mess with those um, just yet so yeah let's do cast writings cast write latency since it's a nice obvious one we'll just try setting that a step lower Previous le previous layer says hi up a wee bit T R D R D S C L and T W R W R S C L. Alright. I'll give that a look at some point. Ah We have naught D from tightening up cast write latency. That's a new one. Wonder if it's gonna recover from that. It's not looking as if it's going to recover. I'm just going to spam the reset button and see if that makes it recover. <laughs> nope. Come on. Hey Alex, welcome back. Um, I was going to say it's going alright. It's not going alright because it's currently not booting. But other than that it's going alright. I think this might be our third CMOS clear? Yeah, screw it. So, there we go. My clear CMOS button has been poked. Uh, what OC did you run for 28.037 seconds? I will load up the profile and show you in a minute. Because it, it's all about the sub timings. Um, there's row cycle time is massively beneficial for Y Cruncher. 
Um, but I'd also tighten to TRAS a little bit, that helped. So let's load up the profile. So those are primaries, they help a little bit, but like the really big thing is um, row cycle time, 52. RRDs 4416, that's a really big one. Um, RTP can be quite a big one uh, for Y Cruncher, but this memory does not like it. Like, default is 12, so, like, yeah. Um, oh, and I think those are, those are the SCLs that previous layer was talking about. Um, so let's save and reboot so that we're actually getting the current timings there. Forks asks, are you going for daily stable settings? No, I'm not. I'm doing Ycruncher 1B. I should really have that actually on screen, shouldn't I? Let's fix that in a moment. Alex says I missed the frequency. Uh, 3200. I couldn't get it to be happy above 3200, sadly. Oh, and the BIOS has gone weird. Wonderful. Just what I was hoping for. Yeah, they boot 3333, but I couldn't even get um, 3266. Well, 3266 was stable, but with looser timing, so it was slower. Um, 3333 I could not get stable. Alright. So here are the SCLs that previous layer mentioned. I guess they're both at 5 at the minute so let's try 4s. What's your PB for Y Cruncher with the DOMS, by the way? Um, so the thing is, um, in this configuration with this CPU clock speed, um, m my PB is what's on the screen, basically. However, I will have done probably faster speeds with the 5950X in a different configuration. Um, but I'd have to check that on hardware bot. So give me a moment and I'll find out I'll find out what the best Y Cruncher score I've done with 5950X is. It'll be really funny if I haven't done a fast one. And it turns out that's actually my best. I did for the 5800X. I've done that with dual rank E die, and I, I still hold the 2.5B hardware record. Uh, 1B I did all right, but it's not that far up there. Blimmin' heck, hardware bot is slow today, even by hardware bot standards. Okay, here we go. If it will deign to load the site. So, my personal best with this processor overall is just under 22 seconds. Ooh, 27.946, nice. Let's rerun that to affirm stability, but that looks like a really nice benefit from the SCLs. I mean, bearing in mind this is immediately after, like, um, loading defaults. Okay, so it looks like my PB on this processor is not actually with the dual rank B die, it's with single rank B die, and I've pushed the clock um, with async settings. So that's my overall PB, and I think it might even be at a lower CPU core speed, funnily enough. Okay. Well, that's, that's stable or stable enough for our purposes, so... 
let's update that PB there. Why are you running desync there? asks Alex. Uh, because it was faster. I, maybe it's because I wasn't touching TRFC or who knows, but like um, in this configuration with the 5950X, desync uh, for me was actually faster. I think it's just the nature of Y Cruncher as a workload. Um, right. So I'll save a profile again. I want to see if the SCLs can go tighter. Because I saw three. I saw three on auto. So three must be possible. Whether it's possible at 3200, who knows. I mean, it's looking like it. it's trying. I say that, it just stuck at 40. Darn. Alex says I thought Y Cruncher wanted synced. Guess I'm wrong then. It seems to depend. I think most people have had best results synced. I don't know why I was getting better results desync. Forks, uh, presumably talking about the B die, says, I'd imagine you could do something like 4200, 148, 1428, very tight subs. Yeah, maybe. I can probably beat my personal best, to be honest, if I have a crack at it. Not on these sticks, but like. It's probably possible for me to do so. I wish this board recovered from anything other than F9, and only some of the F9s at that. I guess that's... How many CMOS clears is that now? Four? I think it's four. Let's add that to the notes. Um... Um, Forks says desync was far better on Threadripper in my experience, but 5950X is a similar core power to memory bandwidth as the 3970X, even more so since the cores are stronger. Yeah, exactly, right? I, that's, that's kind of the logic, is like, it's, the cores are crunching through data so fast that it's the amount of data that you can push through the memory that matters rather than it being the case that the cores are um, waiting for um, memory later. Uh, I'm not sure how to phrase this. Um, if you're not bound by memory throughput, if you're mostly bound by the core, then sometimes the core is going to be coming up with a request for the memory and waiting the memory latency until that request is filled. And so memory latency gets really important. But if um, if the memory bus is being used very heavily, if you're pushing a lot of data in and out of memory all of the time constantly, then it's going to become more about throughput and less about latency because the memory is always busy with something. So... Does that make any sense? I don't know. That's roughly how I kind of am viewing it here. So, let's see if just one of these... Um, so, 
Vasta Castellet for right goes way tighter. So let's see if the right to right SCL goes tighter. Or if we'll get our fifth CMOS clear. Ooh. That might have been a good instinct there. We're loading the OS. Oh, no, we're back. That's fine. That's that's quite normal for like the first time after loading a after you've seen us cleared and load a, loaded a profile. <sighs> Words. And we're just past the two hour mark. So we're in OS. Validating system timers, initialising hardware info. Let's see if that SCL for right has helped. I don't want to comment on how it's going, because if I say, oh, it hasn't crashed yet, then it'll crash just to make me look silly. It's looking good though. That's looking very good. 27.924. That's a new PB. Not by much, but it's a new PB. Let's run that one more time. But that's looking pretty happy. We are getting there. It is slow and steady, but we are getting there. <sighs> okay. So let's update the PB there. Ah. Oh, this has got so much more difficult since I added the CMOS clears. Ah, oh, blooming egg. Ah. I'm going to add the CMOS clears to the top instead because Streamlabs OBS is terrible at handling this. Can I see a Zen timings? You may see a Zen timings. Let's load up Zen timings. There is your Zen timings. Uh, Alex asks, here's a stupid question. When you send a water cooling loop in the mail, you take out the coolant, right? I have bought water, water cooling parts off of eBay that came assembled as a loop with the coolant included. Um, I don't think that the mail service would generally be very happy with you if they knew that you were doing that, though. Uh, it depends on the postal service in question as to what their rules are for like sending liquids or things with liquids in them um, but I mean yeah generally my instinct would be to take out the coolant but I, I'm not sure uh, Forks asks did gear down mode off seem to be the play here I found the opposite to be the case so, the thing is, with gear down mode on, these sticks don't go above 3200. Uh, or I couldn't, well, I could get them to 3266, but the timings were worse and it was slower. So, 3200 is the max viable speed, and at that speed, gear down mode off, uh, 1T works and is faster. So, I'm running it. And it did help a bit, which is nice. Um, alright, well, I'm going to close up Zen Timings, so last chance to take a screenshot or something, and uh, yeah, let's reboot and let's tighten something else.
so I guess SCLs have been treating us SC well, so let's let's see if the right one will go even tighter. Let's see if it will go to two. I see B2, that's a good sign. stand up while I run this. It is getting to that time. Forks says this makes me want to bench a 5950X. I think the high core to memory bandwidth ratio makes mem benches actually fun. Yeah, 100% agree. Stuff like Y Cruncher on a 5950X is so fun because. Oh, that's not stable, is it? Um, because you don't need to be frozen. Like, it's a CPU benchmark, but you don't need to be frozen to be competitive. And it's so sensitive to all the different things that you can do with memory without it being like a X2652. Yeah, absolutely. Without it being really, like, weird. Um. You know, it's not like, you know, Ida 64. Ida 64 can be fun in its way, to be fair. Right. After I get my next successful pair of runs, I'm going to go for a bio break. Because I'm closing in on needing that now after a couple of hours. But I need to get a successful couple of runs in first, so I will loosen that back out. Um, write to read, short and long. So if it's running 412 by default, what about 48? That might be quite aggressive. Um, Alex says all the mail have is about sending liquids with planes, the mail people are useless. Okay. I, I mean, emptying out the loop will make it a lot lighter, which might make it cheaper to send anyway, so that might be a reason to drain it. Um, if you send a loop with coolant in it, I guess the main thing is just to like, uh, wrap some tissues around all of the fittings or something just so that if there is a little bit of um, a little bit of a leak it's alright. Forks asks what sticks are these exactly? I can answer that um, so they are colourful war halberd this is the packaging for them um, and they are 3000 CL16 spec and they come as single packs of 8 gig so it's one 8 gig stick per pack I have two of them That was quite an early fail. I'm going to hit the reset button on that one. Yeah. 
These six are also um, a China-only SKU, so I actually they launched back when I was still writing for Player, and I asked for for a review sample, and they said no because it's China only. Um, and so I went to a lot of inconvenience and not insignificant expense to um, get some sourced from China and shipped to me. And then by the time they actually arrived, I was no longer writing for player. So let's hope that TWTR 10 works. It's it's going to take oh no that was worse that was terrible is it really that bad or is that just unlucky how is that worse all right unlucky boot maybe but okay see the problem here is that the stream is going to start to take a bit of a dark turn because it's like I've said I don't get to go to the toilet until like I've had two back to back successful runs what if that never happens hey call me Tim uh, Tim the Enchanter says more vaults so it I'm not sure because like when I was trying to run higher frequency they actually preferred lower voltage if anything um, I'm going to put those back to auto because they don't seem to be doing anything useful and let's try right recovery time of 20 I don't know it might be worth trying more voltage <laughs> Tech Tested says, if I recall correctly, voltage solves all problems. You can't get everywhere with just add voltage. You can get pretty far. But, yeah, I don't know. I guess I could try 1.4 at some point, but... I have a mug that says otherwise. Yes, you do. You've got a drinking vessel as well that, that, that does the same. Does that joke make sense? I'm not sure if that joke makes sense. I don't know how somebody's face would say... Well, with the mouth, I suppose. Your face says stuff with the mouth. Okay, this is uh, right recovery time of 20, and oh, no. Nope. Yeah, no, that's not happy. Um, It was 24 default according to the BIOS, let's try 22. Please be stable this time. Uh, call me Tim the Enchanter asks, you got enough fans in that case, Mick? Uh, no. I only have seven. Well, okay, nine. Because if you count the chipset fan and the VRM fan, it's nine. 
is because uh, there's one down there that you can't see um, in the bottom, and then we've got three on the AIO, another two there, one there, and then chipset fan AIO fan. No, that's not enough. Um, there is no fan directly on memory. We just have the incidental airflow from this one, and then like the air being pulled up by the top fans, um, and I guess the VRM fan as well. But like we could we could slap a memory cooler on there. We don't have anything cooling the GPU actively, although I can tell by the fact that the box is fluttering. There's some airflow. No, it could definitely stand to have more fans. Apart from anything else, there's a great big blank spot on the AIO right there. But that's kind of necessary because, like, it's difficult enough fitting GPUs in this case as it is. I, I, at some point, I kind of want to maybe get a bigger case. I can't fit a 270X. Uh, it's a mesh if I see. Um, I can't fit a 270X Toxic in it. Okay, come on. Please run. Please be stable. Because if this is stable, I can go pee. And I need to pee. That's one pass. That's a good that's a good time as well. 27.774. So I'll note that time down and we'll rerun for our stability check. <sighs> Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. Hey, right, that's stable. Good, wonderful. I'll update the personal best, and then I'll set the BRB screen, and then I'll run an ad break. So, update the notes. Do, do, do. Where's the, the... There, text entry. Uh, Forks asks, think the 36C14 kit can go faster? Absolutely, that was only XMP. It can definitely go way faster than that. You know, it's sub-timings matter for Y-Cruncher. Right, so I've updated it with the personal best. I'm going to go to the BRB screen, and then I'm going to run a three-minute ad break. So uh, feel free to take your own bio break, get a cup of tea, whatever you feel like doing, get a bottle of water, glass of water. I will see you in about three minutes.
All right, I think um, we're back from the ad break, aren't we? Good, right. Yes, we've been back from the ad break for about 20, 25 seconds. Oh, perfect. How's everyone doing? I am good now. I've got a fresh bottle of water. Ah, delicious tap water. This stream is sponsored by just going to the tap and getting some tap water. Offer not valid in London. Right, well, we're back. Um, let's see what else we can tighten, I suppose. But yeah, I'm, I'm feeling good, so I, th I think maybe um, we'll see where we get with this colourful stuff. But I might see if I can tighten up the Dominators and get a better score out of those, maybe even take on my PB. Once we're done with the, the CXMT stuff. That'd be nice. Uh, right. And uh, cast write latency. We tried fifteen. It made it very unhappy. Um, so basically, we've got command address bus setup time, which probably isn't going to really do anything. Uh, TCKE shouldn't do anything. Uh, we have the pirate timings, like TRDWR. Um, and maybe write to read short can go slower. Uh, go slower? I mean, it probably can go slower. Maybe it can go tighter. Um, Might as well try that. So we feel like we've tried it. Fox says CKE helps even though it shouldn't in my experience. Wonderful. Uh, might give that a go then I suppose. I hate it when stuff like that happens. <sighs> WTR specifically WTRS will it help will it be making our computer faster me hearties I mean it's looking good um Hasn't crashed yet. Ooh. That's not faster. It's not too bad. I mean, that might just be run to run variants. I mean, it doesn't look unstable, but it also doesn't look like it's helping. But we'll, we'll, we'll see on the second run. Yeah, that's an improvement. I'll, I'll add that to the PB. Uh, 27.7... Oh, what's that? 6.4? Hooray for 10 milliseconds. It counts.
Uh, Tim asks, Mick, do you still have access to the r slash overclock wiki? I don't know. I don't mod that subreddit anymore. I quit a while ago. There's a few people who have edit permission, but I don't think I do. Uh, I don't know if previous Slayer is still in the chat. He might have edit permission. Uh, to be honest, I think there needs to be an overclocking wiki that isn't tied to Reddit, because Reddit... I, this is a whole rant. Um, Reddit don't care about wikis as, like, a platform for, you know, information that people might use, as far as I can tell. Um, they've not really given any indication that they do care about wikis, which is fine. They don't have to. But it makes me sort of worry that it will all be lost one day. That they'll just, like, pull support for wikis. Um... And the, the other issue, the other kind of worry is that um, the Reddit wiki doesn't actually support images at all. Like, there's a really hacky workaround with CSS that lets you add an image to an article, but it's a complete pain. And I think it makes it so that, like, you have to download all of the images for, for the wiki, like, on any page. I'm not 100% sure on that last bit. Don't quote me on it. But, like, it's a complete pain to add an image on a Reddit wiki. Uh, Fork says we should make one on GitHub, but I think that would then be tied to an individual user account, so I'm not sure. Um, I think Fandom might actually be the best platform for an overclocking wiki, um, but I'm interested what other... Uh, the other one that I looked at that seems viable is Mirahees, but basically I don't want to be responsible for it again. Uh, since 3 worked and 2 is apparently valid, let's try 2. It might be that it's, like, not even going to do anything, but we'll do it again. But yeah, I personally, I think that the thing about fandom as a wiki platform is they seem to really like to, like, hold on to data. Like, one of the criticisms of them is that they have a policy that's like, we retain data even if you don't want us to. Um... Tim asks, tried TWR. Yes, I have. That's about as low as it goes. But yeah. Mirahees seem to be, you know, a nicer kind of company. But also they have a policy that's like, if a wiki is inactive, they might just delete it. Um, which is not ideal. Whereas fandom seem to be like, you know, we will keep your data forever and ever and ever so that we can plaster adverts all over it. Which is obviously, like, not ideal. It would be nice if people could access this kind of information without adverts plastered all over it. But, okay, so that's not better than the PB, but it did run. I feel like it's it's better if it at least means that it will be preserved, you know? So that that's kind of my take on overclocking wikis, but writing wiki articles is kind of a lot of effort, um, especially writing good ones. 27.725, that's a nice improvement. But yeah, and it, it's also, like, I don't mean to sound like I'm complaining, but wiki writing is a pretty thankless task, like, as things to do with your time go. Sometimes you get positive feedback, but it's quite rare. Uh, Tim says, well, I made a text file with the DDR2, 3, and 4 bits of the wiki, so if the worst happens... That's good, that's handy. Um, Alice says, GitHub would have the advantage of being based on Markdown, which Reddit also uses. Not sure if an identical version, though. Uh, I guess? I don't know. I tried transpo um I tried moving over some of the DDR four article from Reddit to uh fandom and the thing that really slowed me down was actually it wasn't
copying the information so much as it was just wanting to edit it and like find and add citations and clean it up a bit. Um, that was the thing that really slowed me down. Because the Reddit wiki has been written without really using citations. Which is fine if it's only a selected, like, explicitly trusted group of people who are getting to write it, I suppose. But, like, it's not really ideal for a more public wiki. So, yeah. Anyway, um, so that's minimised now. Um, why... Why does the board say that 4-act window can go to 6? That doesn't make sense. You know what? I'm going to save the profile. And then... I mean, maybe that's just a typo. Maybe it's supposed to say 16. Let's try T4 of 6. Why not? See what happens. I'm predicting it makes no difference whatsoever. Fawkes says there are a lot of timings that give a mystery benefit when flawed and 4-6 is 1. That's interesting. So it might actually help. That would be kind of cool if it does. Um, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, boop. I mean, it would... It would be weird if it wasn't stable. So I'm expecting it to be stable. That's looking fast. That that was okay. Let's see if the second run's any faster. Because the second run has been faster lately. Forks says CKE has similar behaviour. I put some notes in the stream discussion Discord channel. Since you've mentioned the Discord, I should probably post the link, shouldn't I? So let's uh poke the bot. So yes. There is a Discord. Um for talking about the streams and um, for me pinging people when the streams go live um, and that is another 20 milliseconds faster um, yeah the discord also has like a channel for car stuff because I got into cars and decided to add a channel for car stuff because it's my discord I do what I want um, yeah feel free to join if you want to ping on discord when I go live basically <laughs> Um, well, yeah, so that did help. Um, I should actually check the Discord, check what you uh, put in there, since I am... Disabling the level 2 prefetcher helped. Running decent gear down there seems to be play. Um, CK helps. Fair enough. Um, there's also the identifying RAM channel, which is very nice. That's true, yeah. Because I like identifying RAM. So I guess, you know, if people want to get me to help them identify RAM, I'm willing to give it a go, because it's fun. And I like to think I'm quite good at it. Fork says, also lol at the RAM shoot. Yeah, I, I spent, like, easily ten minutes on that, maybe more. Um... Can it, if I post it on Twitch, will it work? 
hopefully it'll work. I don't know if the Discord link will, if it'll be happy with the Discord link. But I guess let me know if that works for you, if you, if people can try it. Um, what am I doing? Timings, memory timings. What else can I tighten? Um, let's try. Let's save the profile. Oh no! Actually, let's. Well, I should have taken the profile just in general. What about CKE? Might as well minimize CKE because it's probably going to work. that's working. You know, not to jinx it or anything, but it is technology. It does sometimes run according to some kind of logic. And logically, of course, it works. Come on, hardware info. Hmm. Right. So we'll see if this is any faster. It's probably going to be a little slower on the first run. I'd be impressed if it's faster on the first run. We're less than 0.4 seconds from the Dominators now. Oof! Wow! Maybe that was a fluke, but... Jeez. Hey, Yuz! Yeah, still going. I'm I'm enjoying myself. It's it's Y Cruncher. I like Y Cruncher. Maybe CKE depend uh, behavior is motherboard dependent. Yeah, this is slower. This is way slower. This is like 0.1 of a second worse, almost. That's really interesting. So I wonder if power down mode has turned itself on as a result of touching CKE, perhaps. Forks says, interesting, wonder if it made other timings auto higher. Yeah, I maybe. Oof. Yeah. That's very consistent. It's definitely worse. Uh, fire up Zen timings. Um, yeah. Nothing immediately jumps out as untoward here. But I maybe... don't necessarily know what I'm looking at. Um, Yoz says one core 10 be face off when one core per CU categories get added. If that ever happens, it. Yeah. It feels like League Hoof's play is to say, oh, well, they shouldn't be added because there's not enough community interest. Whereas the Older Lake P core categories, those are valid because look how much community interest there's been in them. Even though, like, people are benching the older late categories because there's globals going, you know? So it's, yeah, I don't know. It feels a bit like a rigged game to me. Uh, well, power down enable still says disabled, but I don't know. I guess let's set that back to auto and see if the performance comes back. I do really want to do one and like 
1, 3, and 5 core Y-Cruncher 10B, but at the moment, um, the GPU shortage is kind of putting the kibosh on that, because my bright idea for how to do it is to actually use um, GPU memory as swap, which I think is possible and I think it should work, but if I can't buy a GPU that has lots of memory, then, or if I can't do it for a reasonable price, then it's not an option. So let's see if our performance is back now that we've put CKE, CKE back to auto. Yoz says League doesn't like to mess with long term stable categories. <sighs> I've, I've definitely seen elements of that, yeah. It's. <sighs> Honestly, I. Yeah. It's kind of funny that he throws around the accusation or the implication that other people are, like, worried about what's going to affect their points. Because it does feel like he has some ideas of, like, well, this category, like, shouldn't be messed with because, like, it would mean that a load of people lose points. Okay, performance is back. <coughs> well, that's weird. Um, I should have saved a screenshot of Zen timings, shouldn't I? I mean, I don't think anything's jumping out as being suddenly tighter now, but I'm not sure. Uh, maybe one of these right down here at the bottom? I don't know. Yours says, hard to say one core per CU isn't popular when one and three core isn't popular. Yeah, I think it's true. I mean, it's it's been two things for me. Like, obviously... Um, one thing is the principle, and the other thing is I don't like the L3014. You know, I don't like the idea that globals could become contingent on a chip that just, like, you know, is impossible to find outside of buying it off another overclocker. And, you know, it would be a convenient way to do something about that, I guess. Let's try and tighten up RDWR. Let's give that six. That might be a bit aggressive, but no what? Uh, Alex says I'm going to try running Y Cruncher One B on my daily with my garbage RAM OC. Do you think my time will be under sixty seconds? I doubt it. Um, I'm not sure. Ooh, we've got twenty-two. That's a new one. Yeah, uh, Y Crunch is really sensitive to like AVX performance, so anything like older, like Sandy Bridge or Ivy Bridge E, for example, is going to be way slower. Okay. Is this going to be another CMOS clear? That's another 22. I'll give it one more that I think. Welcome to CMOS Clear Town. Population us. Yep. Okay. <laughs> Paul said. I'm going to try running Y Cruncher 1B on my date. Ah, <laughs> oh, I love that. It's like just just the idea that like you started running Y Cruncher and it made the daily crash. And that's why there's like half a message. Oh, 
Oh yeah, did I tell you guys about my GTX 770? I mean, I've, I've been going on about it on Discord a lot. Um, I sold... I, I had a GTX 770 Lightning. Now the thing is, I have lots and lots of GPUs. I have way too many GPUs, right? Um, so when someone else in my team was looking for a new GPU to bench, I sold him my 770 Lightning. And he got it to over 2 gigahertz on LN2. He's taken gold for GPU play. He's probably going to take a lot of other golds at some point. Um, but yeah, I, I don't think I've seen Kepler above 2 gigahertz before. And apparently it was using, like, a lot of watts. I don't remember exactly. It was high. Um, yeah, you know what? Let's just save and exit with the profile, and let's just double check um, what I think it was RDWR. Let's see what it actually does in OS. It's going to take a minute. Fox says insane card. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. So RDWR is 8 at the moment, I guess let's try 7. I don't know. I think we might be at that point with the... I, I don't know how much benefit there is with the pirate timings, so it might be time to try TRFC, maybe. And that's probably going to be the thing that, like actually gets the big score improvement is TRFC. Um, but let's let's give it seven. Let's try seven. Yoz says I remember hearing about a Kingpin seven eighty Ti hitting two gigahertz on the WAN show of all places. Huh that's kind of neat. Might have just been a screenshot. Hmm. It's probably... If it was back in the day, it would be in the Fire Strike rankings, right? Yeah, it was Fire Strike. Oh, cool. I mean, the 770, it was only GPU Pi, so... Yeah, 2 gigahertz fire strike, that's really fucking impressive. Um, Paul says, just done taking apart and putting back together an Xbox series controller, that was painful. Ooh, yeah. Very complex and not user-friendly, you say. Yeah. That's interesting, I mean, I'm not, I'm not surprised kind of wish I was surprised with that kind of thing, but sadly can't say I am. 27.719, we'll give it the re give it the rerun, but I get the feeling that there's not much more performance to be had here, so let's do TRFC next. Uh, Tim says, I stopped playing on my Xbox, then started watching this stream. Oh, I'm, I'm glad that I'm preferable to an Xbox. 27.73, yeah, that's basically no better. <laughs> Alex says, I ran 1B and the time was a little over 60 seconds, because it was 120 seconds. Oof. Um, right. Let's do RFC. Yep, 
Yoz says, I had a 770 Lightning. I sold it to a fellow overclocker before I learned that was like sending an old dog to a special farm. They didn't kill it, pretty sure it just sat on a shelf. And eventually left the XOC community or otherwise went to a collector. That's unfortunate. See, this guy, he's like a really active bencher, like actually on Team MLG with me as well. So, like, yeah, if I sell him a card, I know it's getting benched and benched well. Alright, um, so TRFC, how about 420? 420? 420. Yours says exactly, best case scenario there, yeah, 100%. Like, Kubi's is a really, really good venture. You only have to look at his scores to tell that. Fingers crossed. I think, according to Zen timings, the stock TRFC was like 500 something. Ooh, that's looking fast. Ooh. Hoo hoo! Ho ho ho! 27.472! Oh boy! Um, right, uh, jot that down. 27.472. Alex forgot to set a CPU overclock. Whoops. Yeah, on something like Ivy Bridgey, it's going to be really. Oh! Hello! Hello! Not stable on the rerun, are we? That's unfortunate. Oof. That's annoying. I'm going to try and add a little bit of voltage. A little bit of voltage through my RAM. Come on. Come on, capture card. Yeah. Because, I, I mean, I'll be honest, I just really want to stabilise 420 TRFC. That would be funny. Twenty seven point five one six now, that's a little bit slower. That's okay. Fingers crossed with the extra voltage it passes the rerun. doing better than it was. So TRFC scales with voltage? Maybe. Uh, 
And there's a score. 27.465. Ah, oh, so close. I don't know if previous Slayer is still here, but... Whew, this is actually really close between the Dominators and the CXMT now. Oh boy. Um, I guess... Hmm. So Forks said that dis disabling the Prefetcher helped on Threadripper. So I'm going to save a profile and then maybe try that. Crispy says base clock. Base clock would be cheating because I'm I'm not trying for like a, a I'm not trying for a hardware bot score. Like I'm trying to beat the dominators. I'm trying to get a better score than what these got. And if I base clock up, then I'm getting more CPU clock than the Dominators had, and that is cheating. Uh, oh, no. You know what I can try, though? Save user default. Because I'm not allowed to give myself more core clock, but I can always give myself more F clock and see if that works. That's not cheating. Crispy says, what if you put multi down equivalent? I mean, maybe? I'm going to try F clock though. Maybe unsyncing it will make it worse, or maybe this is going to give me a magic score boost, and I'm going to have beaten the Dominators. We'll see. Fox says desync will let you run much tighter timings since your MC to DRAM is one to two. Well, mm, maybe we'll see. I want to see about that. I'm actually not sure how it behaves when you push F clock above the RAM speed. Very happy with that TRFC there, though. <laughs> um. Yeah, okay, so our U clock to mem clock is still 1 to 1, it's just the F clock is higher. Um, at least as far as Zen timings is concerned. So let's see if that's helped our performance at all. Just passing the three hour mark now. Come on, give me a good score. Ooh. Ooh. Mm. Oof. Ah, oh, that's frustrating. It's not, like, massively worse, but it's not, like, massively better. Like, maybe it's slightly worse. I'm going to rerun. That's, that's annoying. And I don't think this 5950X will reliably do anything better than that on F-Clock. Oh, I could base clock up a bit if I drop the multi, maybe... Yeah, no, okay. It is slightly worse. That's unfortunate. Oh, what else can I do? It's basically, I could try lower TRFC, but that would mean it wouldn't be 420 anymore. But it would probably give me a significant performance improvement. Uh, Prefetcher, that was the other thing. Where's that going to be? That's probably in advanced, isn't it? Uh, 
or somewhere maybe in AMDPBS or CBS. Uh, UMC common options. Uh, no. Uh, CPU common options. Prefetcher settings. Aha. Uh -huh. Now, was it L1 or L2? Fox posted it in the chat, but I was looking at the BIOS, not the chat. Um, what was the notes in the stream discussion? L2 prefetcher. And Fox said that in the chat as well while I was looking at Discord and not the chat. <laughs> Sorry, Fox. Uh, okay, let's try that. I guess I can see how that would help if it means it's not like, I don't know, making the memory busy with random stuff that it doesn't need to be doing. Or, well, not random, deterministic, but probably deterministic, I assume it's deterministic, uh, well, anyway. I guess it's maybe another one, one of those things that you could kind of put down to bandwidth versus latency or something, like if you succeed in having something prefetched then that means you've got lower latency but like if the memory bandwidth is just like full then any unnecessary prefetching is wasting it I don't know well it's not crawling Alex is booting 2133CL9 with 1.8 volts VMAM nice is that, um, you had Hynix uh, 4 gigabit MFR, didn't you? If I remember rightly. Ooh, that's looking quick. <laughs> I think we've done it. Oh, I'm going to rerun to make sure it's stable. But I think that's... If it doesn't pass the rerun, I'm not going to count it. But I don't see why it wouldn't. And it passed. Right. Uh, choose prediction outcome. Will the, the OCC XMT beat the Dominators at XMP? Yes. Uh, right. Well, good. Ah, oh, I'm happy about that. Uh, 27.227 is the best there, isn't it? Hooray for channel points. Yeah. Success! Yay! Right. I want to take a screenshot of that. Um, let's open up Zen Timings and CPU Z. Um, how big is the Benchmate so Goodness me. Benchmate save result window is a thick boy. Um... Uh, yeah, what was the measured um, max CPU stuff? 183 watts, any temperatures? Doesn't mention. Um, 
doesn't mention temperatures. I don't think, unless I'm missing something. Oh well. But, yeah. <sighs> yeah. Garbage can. Um, Alex asks, um, does 0 0.8 seconds faster 1B um, from CL10 to CL9 seem right? Uh, yeah, that sounds about right, honestly. Like, I don't know why, but why Cruncher is not very sensitive to CAS latency. It just isn't. It's sub-timings. I mean, this, I feel, is what I've proved here. Um, in fact... I'm going to edit the notes a little bit. So, a dual rank kit of 3600 CL14 got beaten by a single rank kit running at 3200 CL16. That gives you an idea, like, if anybody ever, like, somebody clip this, and if anyone ever argues with you and says that why Cruncher cares about primary timings, why Cruncher cares about, like, you know, what your CAS latency is, show them this. Because, like, it's, it's sub-timings. It's all about the sub-timings for why Cruncher. Yours asks further testing now. Um, I honestly can't really think of anything else that I can do with the CXMT. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to... Actually, where's a USB stick that I can use? Where's a no, USB stick I need to I think this one's FAT32? Let me check. I want to save the profile. Um, yeah, that's probably fine. I'll save the profile in the BIOS, but I'll also save it to the USB drive. And then what I'm going to do, because I am enjoying myself, I want to put the dominators back in and see what I can do with them if I tune them a bit more. So... Uh, let's just save over that because I have no idea what that is. Okay, apparently that's saved to the flash drive. Um, so, I guess the thing to do now is I'm going to reset all of the settings. Because we've got our profile saved, that's safe. And let's put the B die in. And let's see what that can do when it's actually tuned properly. I, I'd like to keep going just a little bit. Um, I'm not going to spend another three hours on the Dominators.
But yeah, I'd like to give them a go. Uh, let's turn that off. Actually, you know what I'm going to do is I'm going to run a one minute ad break while I'm changing the RAM out. Um, yeah, one minute. Yeah, let's say one minute because I, I don't know how long I'll take and I don't want to make it too long. But what that does do is it does disable pre-roll adverts for a little while. So, yeah, because I, I don't consider changing RAM to be that interesting to watch. So, yeah, um, go and, you know, stand up, have a stretch. I'll see you in a minute. I probably should, because not everyone gets the adverts, so I probably should switch to the camera anyway. Well, I hope you're all taking the opportunity to stand up and have a stretch. Did I? Yeah, I turned it off at the power supply. Okay, good. Okie dokie. Uh, where are we on the advert? Yep, the advert is finished. Good, good. Uh, well, I'll take the opportunity to give you another look uh, close up at the sticks. So, there they are. There's the CXMT. Um, I'll post some proper photos in the stream server once I'm done. Uh, which, as I've mentioned it again, let's plug the Discord again. Join the Discord if you want to be pinged when I'm streaming. And also if you want to talk about the streams, and also if you want me to identify some RAM for you, I suppose. Um, oh, we have some uh, PCB identification markings here as well, if anybody's interested in that. There is our PCB marking. Um, so Crispy asks, does it have a PCB rev on it anywhere? And there's your answer. Um, it also on this side uh, has a layer count indicator. Don't know if you can tell, but it's it's an eight layer. Um, I mean, uh, <laughs> preempted Alex's question there. It's clearly an A2 layout, just from looking at it. It looks like reference A2 to me. But, yeah, and I'll post some clear photos on the Discord once I'm finished. Um, so, with that in mind... Um, while... While that gets accustomed to the Corsairs, I need to update the title. I'm not doing the CXMT anymore. There we go. And that's booted into Windows at default, but that's fine. Right. And this is where the unfair competition comes in. Because I, I am about to uh, blow the CXMT out of the water using extremely expensive, dual rank, you know, highly binned enthusiast RAM. Uh, 
Or well, at least hopefully I am. It'll be a bit embarrassing if I don't. Is that I think that's about all I'm comfortable setting blind. So we've got our row cycle time. Um I've well primary timings, flat fourteens except for R C D W R we're doing eight. Um TRAS 28 because that's what people seem to always run for B-Day. Row cycle time we've tightened a bit to 56. RRDs 4416. Um, TRFC we're running 420 which is a little bit on the loose side for B-Day but lol 420. Um, yeah 3733 sync which this CPU should be fine with. Let's go! <laughs> Alice says, with well-documented behaviour and significant amounts of prior experience, no less. Yeah, exactly. Really is an unfair advantage. Alex asks, what VMAM are you running now? 1.55 volts. So not that high. Um, I think it will scale higher, to be fair. Look at it go. Oh, it's it's going to be so funny if it comes out to 30 seconds. Nope, there we are. Boom. 23.364. Where's that relative to my PB? That's not a new PB. Okay. Um... Gonna rerun that just to make sure it's stable. Yep. So, shall we see if it does better async? One point seven volts, forty two sixty six might be a bit optimistic, but let's give it a pop. Yeah, no, that's F9ing. It's at least going to recover. Alright, I'll try 41.33 next. Is gear down mode still off? No, I, I don't... No, it won't be, because it wouldn't have worked at 37.33, I don't think. Um, I'm pretty sure I set that back to default. I'll double check when I'm in BIOS anyway. 
uh, for peace of mind. Um, okay, well, the BIOS is doing a thing, but it's just about legible. Uh, where's our gear down mode? Gear down mode, auto. Um, and sorry about the capture card, there's not a lot I can do. Let's try 4133. Yoz says, so random thought, where did NVIDIA get 16 series naming from? Um, I don't know. Like 9, 10, 20, 16, 30. Hmm. I mean, I think the 16 series was probably intended to, like, continue to be the low-end offering, even with the 30 series for the high-end offering, but, I, yeah, I don't know, it's a bit weird. Right, let's fire up Zen timings, double check that we are where we're supposed to be. Uh, we are not, we are back at defaults. Right. I don't know what it says about me that uh, the first thing that made me realise something was up was TRFC. That's like where my eyes went. Uh, a little bit of Eden's all I need. Let's just give it 1.8 volts and see what happens. I mean, it's still F9ing. Okay. I wasn't sure what this motherboard would be like for, you know, high speed dual rank memory, or what this CPU would be like for that matter. And now I have my answer. I could probably tune it and get it to behave better, but I can't be bothered. Alex says that a uh, sub timing from six to four dropped his time by nearly a second. Wasn't TRTP by any chance, was it? It's going to be that, or maybe RRD, perhaps TRRD. White Crunch is really fun, isn't it? Uh, right, let's just boot at I can't remember how low those go. Uh, let's try RTP. I'm a huge fan of dropping TRTP. Uh, let's try 8. B2? <laughs> I 
I feel like this has been a really successful stream if it for no well for two reasons. Firstly, because I actually achieved my objective and I got the Tune C X M T to be like my best RAM at XMP. Which is I'm really happy about that. Um but also because I've got like multiple people benching Y Cruncher now. I, I I'm pleased with this. This has gone well. Fork says always fun to dust some LN2 scores on water. Oh, absolutely, yeah. Maybe I should. You know what I should do? I should get my my partner drew the garbage can emote. Um, I should get her to do just a gold cup emote. That would be good to have. I could make that like maybe the bits unlock emote perhaps that that would seem appropriate 23.646 that's how is that worse why is that slower it has no business being slower let's give it a rerun But yeah, the thing I like bits emotes on Twitch because like you have them perpetually. Like I have a random like emote on Twitch that I'm gonna post in the chat now. That like I just unlocked this like from cheering on someone's channel. Um and like I have it forever now. Okay, no, this is definitely slower. What's going on? Is RTP making it worse? Let's try RTP 10. Uh, and yeah, uh, Alex, RAS to RAS delay is RRD. That's what RRD stands for. RAS to RAS delay. Do you think I can do three? I don't think so. I think by spec four is like the lowest that m like means anything for DDR three and four. Uh, I mean, it might boot and run, even so. I don't know if it will make a difference, though. Right, so let's see if 10 RTP behaves any differently. See so if you've got a 4 activate window or something somewhere. T4, FAW. Alright. I'm going to set a hard limit for myself and say I'm not going to go above 4 hours. So it's 3 hours 30 now. Um, I don't want to get too deep into like a second thing on this stream. But also I'm really enjoying myself. Um, so yeah. Oh, I'm, I'm really glad I picked this to do on stream. This this has been great. Yoz says lowering T4 below 16 inexplicably is still faster. Probably sets another timing lower. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I've had as well. Um, like I. The, it helped with the CXMT earlier. Only by a little bit, but like, you know, it countered. It's still slower, that's really weird. Why would RTP help on Samsung, like, e die and not on anything else? That's... Ugh, I do not get it.
It's still like 0.3 of a second slower. What's going on? I'm going to just set RTP back to auto and just see what happens. I'm definitely starting to flag now, actually. I'm like yawning a lot more and feeling quite tired. RTP auto. Let's, let's go. Let's do RTP auto. Um, so TRRD is the delay between two uh, read commands. I don't remember exactly the precise description of what it does because I think it's easy to confuse with uh, CCD. Um, but it's it's the delay between read commands, and then um, for activate window is the number of cycles in which you can issue four read commands, and it's that's basically used to kind of slow down the read commands a bit if the memory needs it. Um, forks, on DDR3 there isn't an RRD, S and L, there's just one RRD for everything. Okay, no, it's still slower. What the... Uh, that's annoying. Um... Is the prefetcher back on, maybe? Hmm. It shouldn't be, but that's never stopped it before. Probably worth checking. Come on. Come on, capture card. Uh, CPS. Uh, CPU coming up. Good shout. Good shout. Alright, so let's disable Prefetcher again and take RTP back down to 8. Yeah, it was the fucking Prefetcher. You can roughly gauge OS corruption stroke efficiency by kernel time. That's interesting. A bit, bit worried by the corruption bit there, but yeah. I don't know. This OS has been through a lot, to be fair. Like, I actually bought this OS. I bought this copy of Windows 10. Because um, I used it for all of my benchmarking for player. Um, and since then I've used it for all of my GPU benchmarking as well. I should really take an image of it at some point. Okay, well that is more like it. Let's just give it the old rerun a rooney. Rerun a rooney? What am I on about?
Okay, yeah, I mean 23.353, technically that's an improvement. Not a major improvement. Um, I want to do the SCLs because they've helped a bit with the CXMT. So let's see if they help with the B die. SCLs to two is huge, says Forks. Well then, I think I know what I'm doing next. And the answer is saving a bloody profile. Because I don't know what I'm doing with SCLs. I don't know what these um, can take for SCLs. But let's do it. Let's see what happens. Floor the DDs and SCs can probably go six. You have a lot of experience with this, don't you? Normally, I'd want to follow the process, but I think here I want to, like, you know, get it done, get it benched within the next twenty minutes. So, I I will. I'll just double check that that booted because it did take a little bit. Um, yep. Yeah. But yes, I, on this occasion I'll, I'll take your advice and I'll give those a go after this run. Or these runs, because I'm going to do two. It's funny because like, the, the F clock on this 5950X is not brilliant. Either that or the Tai Chi is not very good at F clock, but like even with like more up to date BIOSes I haven't really got any big benefits. Twenty three point three three two. It's a teeny tiny improvement. Um let's drop that down and rerun. I'm getting hungry as well. Definitely need to finish up soon, but I also want to keep going. 23.316, nice. Alex says, do you think I can go lower than 200 TRFC? Ah, uh, I don't know. And But bear in mind with, like, if this is your daily system, TRFC is quite a good way to corrupt your operating system, in my opinion. Uh, right. So let's give Forks' as timings a go. Um, so what was it? Um, floor the DDs and the SCs. So one, 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 one. Really? Okay. Um, can probably go 6-6 six, six for the SDs. It looks like RDRDSD is at 5. 
Uh, let's just go with it. Um, is there an AMD equivalent to T-Refi or is it set in some way, asks Yoz. Uh, it's just fixed on AMD, sadly. You can't do anything with it. Uh, I'm going to explicitly set 5 for RDRDSD. And let's... I mean, I bet WR can go lower. But let's not do too many things at once. I've gone... I've done a lot of things at once, to be fair. Um, could probably set T4 to 6 as well, but yeah. Uh, yours asks, fixed intervals based on megahertz or same value always. It's the same like nanosecond value, whatever you do, and nothing can change it as far as I'm aware. Well, uh, the forks timings worked. Let's see if they're faster. Twenty three point three one six to beat, that was on the second run. We're expecting the first run normally to be a bit slower. Twenty three point four two oof, okay. Twenty three point four two nine, that was about a uh, point one of a second slower on the first run. Let's see what the second run is like. Uh, second run is, I mean it's a lot better but it's not as good as it was. Uh, the way that this board acts might be just weird to be fair folks. I, I don't know. I'm going to try setting the DDs and the SCs to auto. Actually, mm, yeah. So I'll set those to auto, and I'll see what that does. Because my theory is that if you explicitly set a timing that isn't used, then it maybe it does something weird. Because uh, setting TCKE made things worse. So maybe it's a bit like that. Uh, So yeah, let's give that a try. And I, I think I, I should. Mm. I'm getting anxious to wrap up. I'm also very aware that like Alex is currently working on stuff and using the stream chat. Um, yeah, let's see how this does. Twenty three point three one nine. So that's really that's the first one and it's really close to the PB. Drinking my friend to the end 
of a brief episode make it one for my baby oh no that's still slightly worse one more for my baby. Uh, I'm gonna give it one more even yeah Alex are you okay moving to discord once I wrap up because I think I could probably be at this for a while longer, fiddling with the Bido. I, I proved the point, because the point was what matters is sub-timings, and if you tune sub-timings you get massive performance. Uh, still slightly worse, interesting. Yeah, I think I'm going to wrap up here, because I am... I am getting... Anxious to close. So, yeah. Um, but thank you very much for watching. I honestly, guys, I I was in an absolutely awful mood earlier today. I, uh, you know, I'd been kind of manic all week, and then I had a massive crash like yesterday evening, and I am um, this. This has really picked me up. Um, I'm feeling a hell of a lot better now. Um, you know, overclocking always picks me up a bit. I always enjoy it, but like, um, it's you guys as well, and I really appreciate you um, stopping by and chatting. Thank you, thank you very much. Um, yeah, I think we had fun. Um, yes. Thank you and uh, goodbye, and uh, I'll see you. Uh, by schedule I'm off next week so I'll probably see you Wednesday the week after um, I don't know if I, I might end up like jumping in to do a bonus stream um, fiddling with this setup and the B-Die or I might not, I don't know um, but by schedule I will see you on Wednesday the week after next um, and until then I will uh, I'll be in the Discord so yeah I'll see you all around um, thank you and goodbye.